Hey, Composing Gloves here, and now it is time to take all the knowledge you have now previously gained from all the other videos in this series and apply it to a new scale. So we've made the, the major scale. Now, here's a C major scale, for example. This should not be a shocker. You should know, you know, this is the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You should at least know that this is the tonic, this is the median, this is the dominant. This is like the four, this is the five. You know, you should be able to look at this and pretty co comprehensively tell me what it is. And you have figured out that this is an interval relationship. You can tell me the intervals. It's like all major intervals and perfect intervals. And you can come down here and go like G or whatever. Now, you know, after all this great stuff, you know, what else could there possibly be? And the answer is minor this is a pretty boring thing if all you're going to do is this this actually um originally was associated with drinking songs because it was such a common scale people just naturally were attracted to it so uh there was other scales that were deemed you know more sacred for churchy use some of them were minor scales. And so let's go ahead and talk about this. So there's modes and there's all these other things. I'm not that knowledgeable on the history side of things. I'm reading history books right now on it. It's really interesting. But we're just going to focus on making a natural minor scale. So there's three main minor scales. There is the natural minor, the harmonic minor, and the melodic minor. We're going to talk about the first one, the natural minor. Why would you want to do this? Well, it's just a different pattern of intervals. That's all it is. So this is whole step, whole step, half step, whole, 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 half, right? Or the perfect all the perfect and major intervals. Well, now we're going to add some minor intervals. Guess what we're going to minor if we... Uh, the only one we're not going to minor is the second. Because this this is just... It's, it's not... I don't know what the deal is. People just didn't like that, I guess. But we're going to we're gonna minor all the other ones. So if they can be minored... Because remember, we can't minor or major a perfect interval. So 4, 5, and 1, and 8 are all immune to us. But... Three, six, and seven. Oh man, the time has come. We're gonna lower you by one half step. Sometimes I accidentally say flat. That's wrong. We're we're lowering them by a half step. And what we've just created is a new series of intervals that we can now use to compose. And to show you just how big a gap this can make, like how intensely different this can be, I'm gonna play a little thing for you. I just I'm just gonna improvise now and see. Remember, this is, so I want to point something else. So there are two other things about this. We're going to talk about parallel minor and relative minor. And I, I sound like I'm covering a lot, but the idea is really simple. In the C major, if we start, oh, I don't know what that was all about. If we start with C as our relative of our major, because remember, everything's happening relative to the major scale. Like learn how to make your major scales if you are still, if you're watching this and don't know how. You're going to need it in order to make all these scales. So you do C and then... If we make a minor scale with C as still the most important note, so C is still our most important note, it's still built off C, then it is now called a parallel minor scale. And it's parallel because, assumably, we were working in C major, and then we went to the parallel minor, meaning we kept our tonal center at C, but we changed the intervals we were using. What does this do? Well, it gives us a whole new sound. It gives us new chords to work with. It's great. I love it. And so there's all sorts of interesting things. So I'm going to move around in C major, and then I'll tell you, I'm going to move around in C minor, the parallel minor, where I flat the three six and seven so three six and seven will be flatted so i'm gonna go ahead and just play a little thing now i'm gonna go to the minor one of the things to note about this is when you do minor here if we if we were to make oh man i can't I haven't gotten into diatonic chords yet. Never mind. We're going to talk about it later. But here's one big difference that like you don't need to understand right now. But in the major scale, diatonically, the seven, the chord built off the seven, the triad built off this, which would be this, naturally would sound like this. It's called a diminished chord. Now, if you were to do it in the minor, though, it would sound like this. Oh, my God, that's pretty cool. So there are some pretty big interval changes that happen that change the tonality quite a bit, even though you're still around C. C is still the hot dog, man. Everyone wants to be with C. And you can do this for any scale. But one more thing before we get going crazy here. There is something called the relative minor. What in... What... 
we just got done with parallel minor. It's the same note starts, okay? But what about this is relative thing? Relative minor is when you take the same series of tones, so we keep all our tones, like we keep all these the same, except for now we start on a note where this same series of tones will be a different scale. Yeah, I know. And there's a girl screaming out there. There's, I, there's the pool right over there, man. So, okay, let's do that. So what would that be? Well, I'll tell you right now. It will be A. So how do you, so if you ever want to get to the natural minor, well, let's do some comparisons real fast because I didn't play them for you real good. So let's do C. So here's what the major scale sounds like, right? Whoops, I wanted this. C. Now here's what the relative, I mean the parallel minor sounds like. So it's a natural parallel minor. Let me put this up higher. It's easier to tell. So that is that versus, you know, this thing. Now, if we take the same series of tones, like I was just talking about, like about to blow your mind with, here we can make the natural minor. And this one is relative to the tones. Man, this is like, I might file a complaint. I don't know. I don't appreciate people screaming in the background of my tutorials. And, I'll, and it's, that's just not okay, screaming in public like that. So look at that, we get the same series only on a different tone using the exact same note. So the note you start on is important and that's what the idea of modes is all about. But we're not gonna talk about modes right now because there are a whole can of worms that's just like, yeah, we're gonna just sort of leave that over there for now. So we have A and the same, you'll notice the same intervals, A major is normally sharp because you are so good at your major scales that you have this memorized now, like you should. And the A major would have these three as sharps, but we have flatted them. We have brought, well, we have brought them down a half step, not necessarily flatted them. We have brought them down a half step and it forms the A. So this is the A minor, which is relative to the C major scale because that has all the same tones as C major. So you could see it like that. And so this, this points out a couple of things. So this is the parallel natural minor to A and the relative natural minor to C. If you didn't understand that, what you need to go do is make all your major scales, then convert them all to minor scales, and then convert them all to the relative minor scale, and then do that in each clef, and then you need to do that, uh, and then you need to take all your relative minor scales, and then you need to make them back into a major scale from their new position, and then you need to make them the parallel minor again. So... Just do a bunch of crap. Just do, just go write a bunch of scales. Like it's fun. It's fun. Go get a, go get a program and just sit there and be like, look, I can make an A, an A natural minor scale. Look at this. And, and people will come by the boat, by the boatloads. Like, see, I'm, I just don't know how else to express this to you. They'll come and they'll say, I want your scales. Please give me your scales. And you'll hand them the sheet and they'll hand you a million dollars and you'll go and buy a popsicle stand and you will sell popsicles made of gold and people will buy them with silver and then silver will increase in gold somehow and then you'll rule the world i i skipped a couple steps in there but like that's how it's going to go down so i'm telling you do that so put in the work you really do want to learn this so one other thing that you need to know about this so what's cool about this is you can take it and you can move between these scales very easily. So we know that this is this, well, let's take this. So we can take the C major scale. Okay, and then we can make it C natural minor. And then we can take it to the relative minor. And this is very easy for us to now choose instead of modulating, because we talked about in the circle of fourths and fifths, that we can modulate to the fourth or to the fifth. So from C major to G major. It has this nice feel to it. It's very easy to do that. What you could do, what you could do, is you could go from C major to parallel C natural minor, or you could go from C major to relative C, which would be A minor, A natural minor. So it's this really cool thing. And the more you see these relationships, or these relationships, gotta say it manly, the more you will be able to move and modulate through keys and it will make your music more interesting. So I encourage you to go and learn all those. Learn them on your instrument. Learn how to write them down. Learn what they look like. Learn what they sound like. Become personal with your scales. You know, go find a room and, and be like, I'm going to go in this room and make some scales. 
it's not as attractive as, you know, making babies, but you know, it's up to you. Make some scale babies. That's what I'm talking about. So I'm going to really quick play for you a little bit in C major. And I'm going to move over to A minor. So I'm going to work my way up to F A minor. So here we go. C. And now I'm going to move into A minor. Back to C major. So we don't know about chords yet, but as you can see, understanding these relationships will really begin to open up doors for you in terms of where you can go in your track. A lot of people sit in one key the whole time and being able to just move between a key can create this. You can write, leave everything the same and just a new key can make it sound so interesting, like really, really cool. So if you have any questions about this, let me know. I know it was sort of a lot of information. Now you're going to go make scale babies. I encourage you to do it. Maybe they'll even have dragon scales. I don't know. Subscribe and have a blessed day.